Hello and welcome to Press Play on Tape, where we talk about old games, forgotten programs, and software gems from the golden age of microcomputing. And today, we've dug up an old game from my childhood, Donald Duck's Playground. It's an educational game designed and published by Sierra in 1984 for the Commodore 64, and subsequently ported to the usual list of great 80s machines such as the IBM PC, the Commodore Amiga, the Atari ST, the Apple II and the TRS-80 color computer. The premise of the game is very simple. You are Donald Duck. You want to build a nice playground for your nephews. You have no money. You decide to work for said money, to buy toys for said playground, for said nephews. And that's it. Under the facade of teaching kids about work and money, Donald Duck's playground is a promotion of successful capitalism. Is the proof? that if you pull yourself by the bootstraps in Duckburg, you can reach your life goals. In this case, buying a lot of crap. On a different note, have you noticed how empty this Duckburg city is? Nobody's around and will ever be. I can imagine that programming NPC was never part of the plan, especially in a kid's game from 1984. But those deserted sidewalks have always thrown me off, even as a kid. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, or maybe it's because everybody knows that. Life is like a hurricane here in Duckburg. Hmm, doesn't look like a hurricane to me. So, what can you do in this game? Well, first of all, you can go to work. Yay! You have four options on the right hand side of the screen. You can apply at the railway company at a toy store, at what appears to be a tomato shop, and finally at the airport. Uh, please ignore the fact that the airport is located in a barn right up Main Street. Duckburg city planning is a thing on its own. Each job is essentially a single player minigame that you can play for a one minute quickie up to a full eight minutes shift. Do not expect anything fancy or complex though, after all it's still a kid's game from 1984. However, I'd say that the games are unique and different enough to be somehow entertaining, even today. I don't know, maybe it's my nostalgia over those speaking, but there's something unique and relaxing in stocking an unreasonably tall shelf of toys in the most boring toy store ever, or catching watermelons being thrown at you from a nearby pickup truck. Sure. Most of the times you will end up fondling your lever furiously, waiting for the Amquack train to reach its destination. But that's the nature of the job, isn't it? The good part is that you need no qualifications to be hired, even for supposedly important tasks such as managing the entire regional railway network. No training needed. Ha! <laughs> training! Ha! <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, regardless of how bad you screw up, you will get paid at the end of the shift. It's actually quite enjoyable to see your hard-earned money fly to your pocket, coin by coin. Mmm, money. So, what do you do with all that money you earn? Well, you do what every good citizen does. You literally go across the road and spend it all in junk. And I'm not even kidding. Your explicit goal in this game is to buy as much junk as possible to stock your playground. Now, a few of the things you come across do make sense for a playground, like slides and ladders. Other things are more, let's say, peculiar, such as old boxes. Bah, whatever makes the kids happy. And the kids should indeed be happy, as everything you buy magically appears in the playground across the railroad tracks, instantly. Talk about an efficient post service, take that Amazon Prime. So, what about the challenge? Is this a difficult game? Well, of course it's not, come on, it's a kid's game, and it's 1984. It has its moments though, like when you're supposed to close the toy store to prevent a seismically active nearby train to destroy your work. Or when Donald engages in abundant duck profanity if you miss a melon at the green grocers. 
Gee, what's your language, man? Luckily, Donald is way less angry at the airport, loading luggage on a plane. This was my favorite minigame as a kid, although I never really understood what those labels meant. Now, I know they identify US airports, but as a kid, I thought they labeled the content of each box. I spent more Sunday afternoons I care to remember wondering who in the world would need so many boxes of laxatives delivered by plane. I mean, a lot of laxatives. Ah, the magic of a child's mind. From here, the game continues in an endless cycle of work, item purchases and play. Just like real life. And then, you are left with the parental joy of observing your offspring exercise their amusement in a custom playground you've built for them. And I hope that's enough for you, because that's all there is in this game. Personally, the part of the game I found most enjoyable as a kid was the insane accumulation of wealth resulting from playing minigames non-stop for entire afternoons. Hmm, was I a weird kid? Anyway, this was Donald Duck's Playground. A game to learn about money, the value of work, and the joy of providing for your family. Also, a game to dwell in the delusion that everybody wants to hire you and that 5 cents can actually get you decent supplies. But then again, Disney. As always, thanks for watching, and if you like this type of content, feel free to stick around for more. My name is Gradion, and this was Press Play on Tape. Then write.